Good morning and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel on this Friday of Easter week. This morning, before I begin, I would like just to take this opportunity to say a prayer as we remember His Royal Highness Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Let us pray. God of our lives, we give thanks for the life of Prince Philip, for his love of his country and for his devotion to duty. We entrust him now to your love and mercy through our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. And I ask your prayers for the Queen, for the whole royal family, and for all those extended members of the family who saw Prince Philip not as a prince or as a duke or as the leader of the military, but rather as a father, a grandfather, a great-grandfather, an uncle, a friend. It is always difficult when we lose someone we love, um, especially in these times when we can't reach out to one another in the ways that we would like to in times of mourning, um, but I think even more so when the world is watching. So we, uh, we pray for all those who, who mourn his loss, who remember him, and who love him so dearly. This morning, I would like to talk to you about that still small voice of God and prayer. I have um, recently been reminded um, about a year ago about the work of Catherine Marshall. Um, periodically through my life, I come back to her as one of my one of my touchstones for spiritual life. And some would say, you know, she's not a theologian. She wasn't um, a great, you know, she wasn't a uh, you know, a, a prolific writer who wrote great things that would change the world. But she wrote things that changed my world. When I was about 13, we moved from um, Hanover, uh, where we'd only lived for about a year and a half, and we're close to family, to Niagara Falls. And into grade seven and didn't know anybody. And, you know, things were kind of kind of a tough transition. And one of my neighbors gave me a box of books, and one of them had Christie in it, written by Catherine Marshall. It was like a really thick, like 500 and some pages novel, based fictionally, but based loosely on the life of her own mother. And I read that book and was fascinated with it, and it, it, it became my friend. And it carried me through some really lonely times until I got to make some friends and get to know people. But it introduced me to the work of Catherine Marshall. Um, and then from there, I went on to do to read things like The Helper, which is a beautiful 40-day journey with the Holy Spirit, which I might just begin soon. I think probably it's time again. Another another resource that I found um, because of finding Catherine Marshall was a book called Adventures in Prayer. It's a very 70s looking book. This one's even less, more like, was well, less 70s than the other one I have, but that was my mom's. And she talks about what prayer is, um, not in some hoity-toity way or some kind of theological, you know, this is how you pray and centering yourself in God. They're really practical prayers, like the prayer of asking, of helplessness, help prayer that helps your dreams come true, the waiting prayer, prayer of relinquishment, the prayer in secret, the prayer of joyous blessing, and the claiming prayer. And some of those seem, you know, like I read them and think, ah, you know, um, those sound a little bit like those entitlement theologies or Joel Osteen or something like that. And when I have reread the chapters that she um, has written, I realized that's not at all what it is. It's very much recognizing that God loves us so much. He wants to have a personal relationship with us, a, w a relationship in which we can come to God and talk about anything. Um, sometimes find that God corrects us and says, you know, grow up or, or get back on the path. Um, but that, that there's nothing that is so beneath God that we can't come to God in prayer about it. And yesterday in my in my devotions, I was reading from this um, the president's devotional, and it was talking about the still small voice um, from John 16, verses 12 to 13. Jesus says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can know now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. And then the Joshua Dubois, the author, says, God is still speaking. Some call it a still, small voice. Others call it holy intuition. Jesus, before he left this earth, assured us that it, that, that it is something else, the Holy Spirit. Our Father and his Son are in heaven above, but they are also present on earth doing, through their representative, who dwells among us. And the Spirit speaks on their behalf, if only we would listen. And the prayer he offers is this. Let us extend an inch of faith in that direction. 
God, we believe that you've sent your spirit as our guide. Help us listen, listen as your wisdom unfolds. Amen. Um, that was sitting with me yesterday, that, that sense of listening for the Spirit's presence and listening to God's Word. And it sort of hit home last evening when we got a phone call um, that sort of upended our lives, possibly. Um, we have, uh, we're in a situation in which we're renting a home, and uh, the owner of the house every year tries it out on the market to see if it's time to to sell it if it's able, he's able to sell it and he was letting us know last night that he's going to do that and that if he does indeed sell it then we are clear we've got our contract our our, our tenancy agreement till the end of july um but that if he sells it then we would not be renewing that agreement and if he can't sell it then we can renew it for another year we've known that all along when we signed the document last summer when we were moving here we knew that there was a possibility that at, after a year, we would have to move again, you know, find another residence here in Wainwright or in Edgerton. Um, we were, I think we were hoping that that wouldn't happen. <laughs> you know, that the, the market's been so bad and, you know, postings aren't happening and people aren't really buying. And, but now the, the owner seems to believe that, you know, the market is better and he's going to try it again, as is his right. And we had a wonderful talk after the, my gut fell through my, Fell, my stomach fell through to my feet and I tried to be very kind and gentle on the phone um, I realized that this is this is one of the gifts of, of our landlord is he's a Christian and so he and I have had conversations before not not in depth but you know gentle Christian conversations and it's part of what made us both feel comfortable about becoming um, landlord and tenant with him that um, we could trust him on his end and he could trust us on ours and we've been doing really well and so during this conversation we had, um, he shared with me his concerns about his own life and family and the, his impetus for wanting to do this now. And, and I could totally understand that. Um, and he, I told him our concerns about, you know, first and month, last month's rent and finding another place to live when really this was last year the only place that was appropriate for us. Um, you know, safety with the dog for all of our stuff, the, the works. It was the perfect place. And through that conversation I started to calm down there was a part of me of course there's a part of me that still is like whoa what are we gonna do what are we gonna do we're gonna be homeless we're gonna be like I have to pay for another move and the military's always paid for our moves so that's a big expense to take on when you're not expecting it um so yeah a little bit of panic but a great part of me was 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 relaxing and saying just trust and I and we pledged that we would pray for each other that we would pray that the right thing that God's will be done for both of our families whatever that might look like and I got off the phone and told Rob and you know there's stressful moment but then really talking to Rob really feeling this incredible peace that we're, we're not going to be homeless we're, we're not going to if we have to move we'll figure out how to move we will find a place to live we're gonna be okay um, a very very serene almost feeling like we had last year when coming here when we had only lived in Round Lake for a year and we found out about Rob's promotion and coming here to Alberta and I was so excited about being here and looking forward to, to living in the province I've wanted to live in since I was 13 maybe setting down roots here maybe staying and 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 being able to be present here and went through prayer and a lot of careful driving through the mountains, taking Dan back and forth to work um, every day while we were there, a real, really strong sense that the Holy Spirit was guiding us, that we, Rob was being posted and I was, I was given the opportunity to work and that was God's doing, that God's fingers were in that pie and I was to just trust that. And I have a real strong sense that this is the same now. I don't know what's going to happen at the end of July. I don't know what's going to happen with our landlord and his circumstances either. But I do trust that the Holy Spirit is present in all of it and will not pick favorites and will not toss us out on our ear to have one member of this conversation get the better than the other. Um, but I was reminded last night to go back to prayer. And so I picked up my book. My, I found my little book that I've been looking at once in a while, this Adventures in Prayer, and I reread the passage or the, the the chapter about the prayer of relinquishment, 
and the need we have to just to let go and trust God. And that's not in that that um, trite sort of let go and trust God, you know, let go and let God. It's not just a phrase or a saying. It is a way of life. There are lots of things in my life right now that I feel are up in the air, discernment about the future, about my ministry, of what's happening in my life, in our family, in the world. Lots of things. And the truth is that God knows all of it and God knows my heart. I don't need to articulate that to God. When I articulate it, it's more for myself. But by saying to God, I relinquish this to you. If it is your will that, you know, if it is your will that, that he sell the house and we find a new place to live, then I trust that we will have a place to go and we will have the resources we need to get there. If it is your will that we stay here and continue living in this home, that we, this house that we've made a home, then thanks be to God for that. But I need to let it go. My worrying will do nothing except give me an ulcer that caused me great heartache and probably block me, block my ears from being able to hear the Holy Spirit speaking to me. So today I'm, I'm continuing to pray the prayer of relinquishment. I relinquish this particular concern to God and I commend the whole situation, my family and my landlords, to God's keeping, knowing that God's best will be done if we don't interfere. And so I, I, that's how I feel about my discernment, about my ministry, about everything in our lives, about my family, where we're living, everything. I am relinquishing it to God. And I invite you today to do that as well. Whatever it is that's bothering you, whatever you're carrying on your heart, say a prayer of true relinquishment to God and acknowledge that it's hard, but also trust that the Holy Spirit is still working and, and, and effective in your world, in your life, in this world today. If you listen, God will speak. In this, and he may speak in the silence. And in that silence, you will find peace. So today, I offer you this prayer of peace. Prayer of relinquishment. May God help you. May God guide you. May God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. Stay home. Please stay home and let's pray for all of our brothers and sisters here in Alberta, across the country, around the world who are dealing with this pandemic and whatever wave this might be and whatever, however long it might last. We must keep the faith. We must be strong. We must stay safe. God bless you. I will see you Sunday for church for the second Sunday of Easter. And I will see you Monday for Church at Home with Rachel. And I promise I will get the, I'll get the segments up earlier next week. God bless everybody.